you multiply zero times a, what do you get? Zero. If this is just something that you've been told. We can actually prove it. Essentially, right. So let's say if a is an integer, oh, here it is. That caveat. Your your disclaimer is helped. So here is our claim. What I'm going to do is I want to write this proof. And I'm going to use the numbers. So if I'm using like axiom one, I'm going to use a one. Save myself a little bit of space. Okay. So here is the proof. Uh, by axiom three, zero plus zero equals zero. So thus, zero plus zero times a is equal to zero times a. Thus, if you multiply a by the same thing on both sides, it's still equal. I'm going to apply axiom eight so that I can distribute this through. So in eight, we have that zero times a plus zero times a distributes a through is equal to zero times a. You buy this? All right, we're almost there. Remember, our goal is to get to zero times a is equal to zero. Uh, what can we do to both sides to get zero here? Add the additive inverse up. We never subtract. We add the additive inverse. We're going to add the additive inverse of zero times a to both sides, right? So by axiom four, there exists the opposite of zero times a, such that zero times a plus the opposite of zero times a equals zero, right? So now we add that to both sides. So what we're going to get here is zero times a plus zero times a plus the opposite of zero times a is equal to zero times a plus the opposite of zero times a, right? Because I can add the same thing to both sides. And now what happens with this and this? This cancels to give me zero. This cancels to give me zero by axiom three. I have zero times a plus zero equals zero, which means that by axiom three, Sorry, this was axiom four, it gives me this, axiom three gives me that. But we no longer have to take anyone's word for it. We can give a formal proof that only depends on certain axioms that are perfectly easy. Any thoughts, questions, or comments on this? Yes. Is there a big 